Ladies and gentlemen, Gay Kim here. Welcome to the market update. Hope you guys had a good day trading today. Market is up about 0.7% on the S&P. Um, looks like we had that last hour rant today. Very interesting because uh, I think it was like up, I don't know, 0.3% or so throughout the day. Just grinding last hour, we saw majority move that came about. NASDAQ is up about 0.6%. Semiconductors down a little bit there. Uh, Dow goes to 1%. Small caps is flat. Uh, transport and the banks are up close to 1% there. Energy and the biotech and emerging market, they did see negative performance today. Oil's down a little bit, about half, half about half a percentage. Uh, dollar is flat. Uh, Treasury bond is down a little bit, and the uh, VIX is down about one percent there. Gold and silver continues to grind. Down day today though. Uh, grayscale Bitcoin is up about one point two percent today. Uh, let's talk about today's uh, price action. What we've seen this week, a lot had happened this week and the majority of that move that happened it all happened this week so we're going to talk about all of this let's uh let's go to that 65 minute chart and the follow up from what we've been talking about here so let's just do a quick recap and as you know that uh, we've been tracking some of these moving averages and gaps. So, and this is one of the thing about this market is that um, you know market uh, will have kind of a volatile you know months, right? As you can see here, it's been a pretty choppy sideways type of move. And then out of nowhere, uh, you see a very clean breakout and then it just shoots back up without any significant pullback like we've seen before. I mean, that's, that's a pretty big move that it made from 384 to 411 uh, with the barely any pullbacks or pretty much just went straight up. And, and, and this is kind of the thing that I talk about, right? So when, when the trend is up, you want to give benefit of the doubt, right? And I say that a lot is because your mindset all should always be assuming, right? It doesn't mean we're not going to have a pullback, man. It doesn't mean there won't be shenanigans. It does not mean, you know, we're not going to have, um, you know, gap downs or some fluctuations and red days, obviously, it just means that we do not know. No one knows how this market, you know, when this market is going to have a truly a clean, nice breakout, or is it how long it's going to continue with this choppy market. And really, it has been a really, really difficult for many people to actually survive in this uh, uh, in this environment is because um, you know, when, when the market is choppy like this, it's really difficult for any short-term traders to profit. You'll get stopped out left and right. You'll be chopped to death. You're trying to go long, place your stops. You'll constantly get stopped out. doesn't matter if you're going long, if you're going short. The market will make sure to get your stop out and moving without you. And that's one of the things is that when the market gets in a really, really chop fast like this, none of the short term traders are going to truly able to make this. Only way to really uh, profit and, and able to get this kind of um, environment to be able to hold through, to, to push through and to able to profit through these kind of uh, seasons and uh, volatile choppy environment is to be longer term. Right? You have to be either position trading this or long-term investing, holding through the ups and downs. You're trying to call top. You're trying to think that this thing is, is, is weighing down or you think this is a topping pattern or some sort and, and you're betting on this market coming down much lower. And then what ended up happening is you ended up missing out the move and you realize this market was at 350 just several months ago, not trading at 411. And this is kind of the big theme that I've been preaching on ever since I've been starting this videos that, you know, we want to assume, right? doesn't mean I know exactly how this market is going to play out. I didn't know we we're going to have this kind of move this week. It, it, we want to assume. And I think one of the things that we talked a lot about was that the gaps really gave us that um, good, uh, you know, 
levels to look at and some of the some of the things we we seen as far as that you know we did see a lot of these uh, fluctuations but this market continued i mean this th we're talking all day going back to november this market faithfully been cultivating higher lows and higher highs even though it's been a choppy move this market has been in that uh, choppy uptrend type of move even though it wasn't smooth swift bullish run and usually what happens is it kind of it kind of gets you gets you to get discouraged and and maybe it'll test your patience and then you realize most people are, okay you know what i think you know i i can't be part of this market and then i think a lot of times this thing comes later once the majority of trade and i like to call it pbp this is what i call patience breaking point once that patience breaking point the pbp most people kind of bail on the market it's too choppy it's getting you know a lot of people trying to call top trying to think that it, it can't go any higher and then once that's done once the market makes sure that majority of retail traders pbp is broken it's shattered they no longer can deal with this market and usually that's when market tends to make a swift fast move and nobody can time that it's very, very difficult to do that. The best way is to stick with the trend and assuming that at some point we may get something like this, but understanding that when the market is choppy, you know, looking for opportunities, but not for anything short term, but you're gonna look for a more longer term duration. That way you can have to withstand a choppy, volatile uh, type of market and able to hold through some of those uh, fluctuations and able to ride the rally they may come later. And, and even just recent um, analysis that we've done that, you know, this, my midterm moving average, my long-term moving average, not once these, they were actually ever, you know, uh, threading to the downside. They're always rising, despite the fact that we did see fluctuations. So, I, we never turn, you know, if you've been watching my videos, I've never turned bearish once uh, in this entire video in the midterm, right? In the short term, we had fluctuations in the short term, obviously, because these short term things are going to shift quickly. And that's why I always say that you need to understand not only the short term, you got to understand short term, midterm, long term, primary, uh, macro, and secular, right? And with that, you know, and these gaps... This gap was never filled, and that was the support. This gap was never filled, that was support. And then how quickly things es escalated uh, from then on, and now we're trading at 411. Can you imagine this number? Just a year ago, man, we're trading at 220. Things look like we'll, it will never get better. The old saying that market always, def always fools the majority. And majority always get fooled. So, you know, and it's interesting because today as I look at this price section right here, and uh, as I zoom in here, it's been grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding, grinding and just, just out of nowhere, we see that last hour ramp. I don't know we've seen any type of price action um, like this. Because, I mean, we've been, you know, I've been analyzing this market with you every single day. I don't think we've ever seen something like this. And I know what people, there's always some people, always, they, they never, ever, you know what I'm saying? Like, they always miss out on big rallies, but they always think that, okay, it's up too much. It should come down or, you know, this is maybe a short opportunity. This is not a short opportunity. I mean, how many times you've tried that already, right? Maybe millions of times in the last one year right? No bears, no shorts made any money. And there's so many people out there still calling for a crash, still calling for a bear market, still saying that it's not sustainable. That's what happens when you let your fear get into it. You let somebody whisper in your ears, not letting the price, right? Price is always a king. It's not what they say that matters. It's what the market does that matters, right? What is the market doing versus what are they saying? So, um, 
Let's quickly check out that oscillator. I mean, there isn't a whole lot we can talk about this. So you can see it, it's pushing up all the way. And that's something that we talked about that I wanted to see. I wanted to see this market pushing up all the way. We also talked about uh, this week that this market has not able to do this for a while. And so, and I also talked about that this thing, this is all time extreme high level. And I said, this isn't a short signal. This isn't a bearish signal. It means the buyers are pushing it very, very hard. And there's a strength in it. You can see right here, when the, when the, when the buyers, I'm talking about when the buyers didn't push it all the way back up. I'm talking about the oscillator. You see how things got difficult, right? But here, push it all the way up. And when the oscillator actually tanked, and we talked about this, yesterday this week pretty much with a very tight range on the price what is it telling us <laughs> it's very adamant like like bulls are not moving they're just gonna rest a little bit just a little bit because they already pushed hard from 380 to 407 they pushed it hard, got into overbought, extreme overbought, a level that we haven't seen in the last seven, eight months. That's not a bear signal, which we talked about. They are waiting for the oscillator reset. They can rest a little bit and they can push again. And that's what we saw here, right? That's what we saw here. They pushed it. And we're pushing it all the way back up to the top of his span. And that's a bullish signal. Oscillators telling us that there is strength in this market. And, and the energy, see what most people don't realize, energy has been building up though. You know, you can see um, since November here, you can see right here, the energy has been building. Because this market continue faithfully being cultivating those higher highs. And out of last, you know, last, I don't know, Five months, six months, seven months, what have you heard from the mainstream media, CNBC, Bloomberg, Market Watch, Yahoo Finance, you know, people on Twitter sharing things, different things. Last seven months, six months, five months, you probably heard all kinds of stuff, how that this isn't sustained. There's some, you know, something about this market is, it's not, don't worry about what they say. You should pay attention to what the market is doing and letting that dictate how you're gonna be positioned in this market, right? Trend is assumed to be in effect until it gives us a clear signal that it has been reversed. We don't have any signal here. Definition of uptrend is higher lows and higher highs. That's been continuing this entire six, seven months, building energy. And we're just, you know what I'm saying? We're just kind of breaking out of that energy, I think. That's kind of, that's kind of you know, what we're seeing the last couple of weeks. I think PBP, patience breaking point, I mean, all the investors and traders, they just, their, their break, patience just gone, shattered. Like they don't want to sit around anymore. This market's way too choppy. Again, that's what happens when you, when you look at things very, very short term. You're trying to time things all the time. Placing short term trades and get stopped out and chopped to death. And I feel like a broken record, but I want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers. We haven't retested that short-term moving average in a quite a bit here. Last time we tested it here, right? Does have some nice, impressive resume because it acted as a resistance here, flipped back and became bullish, right? We haven't retested that short-term. Um, at some point, he wants to retest it, but do I know? Is it gonna retest on Monday? Do you know? You don't know. We don't know. How many people thought it was gonna be here? That didn't happen. How many people thought it was gonna be here? That didn't happen. How many people thought it was gonna be here? That didn't happen. How many people thought it was gonna be here? That didn't happen. How many people thought it was gonna be here? That didn't happen. So what makes you think you're gonna be? You're gonna know that it's gonna be Monday? You see what I'm saying? That's what happens when you try to like predict the move. Instead of sticking with what's been working and giving the benefit of the doubt, assuming that it may continue in this way. Sooner or later, we will retest, but I'm not going to call that and say it's going to retest on Monday. I can't say that because I can't see the future like none of you can see the future, right? 
So let's continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers. Uh, this is a great market for position traders and long-term investors. Extremely, extremely difficult market. Any, any, any short-term traders and swing traders. Um, just, just so, just so you know, if people who truly uh, participated and and accumulated, uh, you know, with this kind of move that we've seen since the 2020 March lows, are the people who actually held through. Right, accumulated at some of these levels doesn't have to be exactly at low, but somewhere in this was and held it through. Are the ones who truly, you know, benefiting from what this market has to offer? Right, I mean, we're witnessing, we're being part of history here. We will this this 2020, we go down in history, just like 1987, 1929. Right, what people don't understand is people always talk about 1987 in a fearful manner. What most people don't talk about is how great, wonderful opportunity it was if you actually bought the lows in 1987 and held it in the next several years. See, that's what most people don't talk about. 2020 is going to go down in history as something like that. In the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, people will be talking about 2020. And of course, people is not going to talk about, a lot of people are not going to talk about how great the wonderful buying opportunity it has been, or it was, because we're currently witnessing and being part of in this, this, this historical moment where the market has just uh, produced and created the fastest, right, V-shaped recovery this market has ever, I mean ever, this has never happened in the history of the stock market. Obviously, most people can only remember how, you know, how difficult and how, you know, horrendous massacre it was in March of 2020. But most people are not going to talk about a wonderful, beautiful um, rally that it has produced. Do you know why, though? Do you know why do you think that is? Because same thing happens with 1987, right? Most people, I, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say, oh my gosh, 1987 lows, man. What a great, wonderful opportunity if you bought that, right? Nobody says that. Everybody talks about how, how horrendous, how terrifying, 1987 is it's because most people didn't capture it like i said market always fools the majority so most retailers didn't capture this so years go by 10 years 20 years 30 years go by they're they're reminiscing about this and they're thinking about reminiscing about 2020 they're not going to talk about how wonderful this rally was they're going to talk about how dreading how terrifying how horrendous massacre it was in 2020 March with the COVID decline. And if you can't see these kind of things in this market, you let someone else whispering this thing and, and, and impute fear in your heart, then, um, and we have abundance of knowledge and information due to the internet abundance information that we didn't have even like 20 30 years ago difference is we have abundance in from abundant information yet good information gets choked out and the bad information gets promoted that's social media ladies and gentlemen i'm talking youtube i'm talking twitter i'm talking these things because Market full, and I said this before, I said, market, why? Why is that, though? Why is that do we have abundant information yet? The real information gets choked out. You know, when it comes to financials uh, in the stock market, why is it real information gets choked, choked out and then all the bad information gets promoted? It's because market always fools the majority. Therefore, the majority follow the fools, they don't understand how these things work. Majority people don't. So they're going to seek out videos that it will make sense to them. When the real information comes about, they don't understand it. So then they neglect it. So it doesn't get promoted. You see what I'm saying? 
looking at the daily chart here in during S&P, uh, year to date, looks like uh, uh, looks like definitely the equities are doing really uh, doing much better than gold and silver. You can see here S and P is up. S and P is up ten uh, percent almost. Uh, and the Nasdaq is up seven percent year to date. But semiconductor still leading there on the year to date basis, seventeen percent. But look at the transport is actually eighteen percent. Banks is actually beating. Uh, Semi this year so far year to date eighteen percent energy is up twenty seven percent so you can see uh, Russell is up about thirteen percent there um, Dow and S and P is pretty much and and it looks like Nasdaq is the most lagging index year to date when the Nasdaq was the leader along with the semiconductor Nasdaq slowed down with the ten percent correction that we saw a couple months ago uh, but trying to catch up here but semiconductor really never slowed down. And so that's kind of what we're witnessing here. So uh, we've been tracking this uh, rising uh, pivot. Uh, we've been tracking this ever since uh, back in you know uh, July, August, September. We talked about how these resistance there, right? We pull back, and what we talked about back in October and September was that um, you know with these pullbacks, um, instead of pulling back hard like it did here, it did here. It pulled back, came up came back down and by doing this it absorbed that volatility right market is protecting itself not coming down more because think about if we didn't have this up move if we would have done this and then done that see that would have been more significant instead it made that move got back up came down so with that little spring it gave you that cushion not to mention was it right on that resistance this is why you may understand you should understand these levels my long-term moving average also residing in that vicinity which we all talked about and we talked about we want to see this rising pivot acting as new support as long as we stay above it we want to continue assume that trend could continue and look at where we're at today 411 it took months months but we're here in four level. But can you really, uh, can you really blame this market? No. I mean, it was at two twenty. We made a bit. We talked. Then we talked about this on last weekend, two weekends ago. So you make a move, market needs to what? Digest its gains or rest. You make a move, market needs to digest and rest its gains. You make a move, market needs to what? Digest and rest its gains and its runs. You make a move, market needs to digest its gains, rest after running, and then you make a move again, right? And it's just, just how this market moves. So, I mean, we can't be complaining that this market has been chopped sideways, consolidating those gains, digesting those gains, resting, after this market just performed the biggest v-shaped rally ever biggest and fastest from 220 to 400 you cannot blame this market consolidating this is exactly see side remember we talked about on a 65 minute chart how this market can what correct through time or correct through price so as a long-term investor like myself this is the best thing i can ask for this is the best thing i can ask for because i don't have to go through big drawdowns so in the market moves sideways that's great that's the best thing I can ask for. And so many people talk about, you know, oh, Amazon didn't go anywhere. Netflix didn't go anywhere. That's true. But if you're long on Netflix and Amazon, somewhere in March and April in 2020, and those guys, you know, we're talking Amazon, Netflix, they all made a big move and started moving sideways. That's what? Digesting its gains, resting after what? Run. Before, and they look like they're getting back up now trying to get back up and that's the best thing the investors can ask for because if they went long somewhere in this vicinity somewhere march april may june somewhere last year they can hold through those sideways before it can run again. so they don't have to go through the drawdowns so for long-term investors these sideways moves is the best thing you can ask for uh, there's a short-term Kind of a, you know, rising wedge type of move. Uh, don't believe people look at this as a sparse parent pattern. This 
you just go check what rising pad, what rising wedge is. They look at this as a bearish pattern, and you can see how it ain't no bearish pattern, right? It broke out and keep moving higher. But when you go on the internet and Twitter, people ta always share these. Oh, this rising wedge is a bearish pattern, and the falling wedge is a bullish pattern. It's 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 not true. I've 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 seen it so many times. All these little cliches and all these little things that people share, and all these people still believing in about the market. It's all wrong. It's all false. Because a real secret, the real strategy that work. People are not going to share because these people who truly understand how this market operates, they, are, they know this. They're not going to share their true strategy, man. Why should they? Why, sh why would they jeopardize their, their operation? If, 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 if this rising wedge is so money, right? And at the same, knowing that market always fools the majority, why would you share? The fact that majority of people know this as rising wedge, which is a bearish pattern, that's what they think. That's exactly the reason why this market is going to break out to the upside. But again, we are in an uptrend nonetheless, not understanding these things. I want to continue to give a benefit of the doubt to the buyers, not bears. I'm not going to be calling tops. Have I ever called top in the last, uh, this entire rally? We want to, um, you know, we, we want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers. And uh, we want to be continue to be positioned long um, and continue to be part of this market to maximize those gains while this market is producing, giving, giving us that opportunity, right? If we do see any kind of pullback next week, there's a reason why I actually drew this here. It's potentially this level right there, that rising, potentially pivot, currently resistance, potentially come back down, maybe that gap area coinciding with that pivot, you know, four or three or so, 400 somewhere, 400, four or three. It, it's, it's a good, it's a solid, strong support in the short term, why? Because by the time this thing comes down, I bet my short term moving average will be in that vicinity. We got the rising pivot, we got the rising support, we got the gap area, it is all colliding in that vicinity. So that 400 level is gonna be uh, served as a strong support if, if, if we do see this market coming back down. Let's check out the cues real quick here. So, I mean, we're, we are continuing to cultivate higher lows and higher highs here. Uh, we had that, you know, we had that, I think we had that reversal right here. So what happened was you see that right there and that was a neckline and that's a gap up. And I think that was it. And then at the trend, and then you see my, my moving average just start to move. And we feel this gap. You see this gap? Talked about last week. That's what bull is gonna go after. We feel that gap held around a little bit, um, and then you can see there's that uh, there's that little gap there too. So I can kind of move this a little bit up here. Maybe I'll do this, right? There's there's a there's that short term base. That's a nice space there, uh, and looks like uh, we're right at that all time high level. Potentially looking to make new. I say we want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers on the NASDAQ also. I saw that Apple was up 2% today. Um, so you can see, you know, NASDAQ and some of the tech stocks, they, they, they saw that correction here in February, it looks like. But NASDAQ is back to the um, all-time high level. So, you know, looking at the, the market overall, uh, I, I, don't, I don't see any reasons why uh, you would, you know, only reason why you'll be fearful of this market is because you're letting garbage in. Uh, you're letting the someone else to influence you. You're not letting the price. You're not letting the price. And also, it's a psychological thing. It's a human proclivity to be fearful when you see the market, you know, being up this much. And that's kind of the way this market 
behave and how this market operates at the same time. If you don't take and something that I always say, you know, I've said this before is that, you know, market uh, punish the chasers and market rewards risk takers. So the problem is that if you missed out uh, at buying opportunities and, and as the market goes higher and higher, it gets extremely, exceedingly, exponentially different or difficult, exceedingly, exponentially, extremely difficult to start going long. Because you think it's already up too much, and this is uh, this is precisely reason, precise reason why most retail traders are bearish because they didn't they missed out their their entry points, and so now they're looking to see they want to see a bigger pullback, they want to see a bigger crash, they want to see thirty another thirty percent correction or something like that, so they can well they can finally load up because they missed out this rally. And that's exactly how, if you just go back and study the history, that's exactly how this market operate. If you don't take the risk, then market isn't going to give you another chance. Maybe years down the road, we might get another chance, but not like this. Something like this, like COVID decline is only going to come every 20, 30 years. You're not going to get anything like this, especially seeing that very, very fast V-shape. But there are still other chances. You didn't have to pick perfect bottoms. There are some other levels you could have gone long. Right? And that's that's the thing. That's what you thought you thought you, you know market was up too much here at 250. Well, what are you gonna think at 337 on Qs? Because if you thought that Qs were up way too much at 250s, even you know, 270s, you thought they need a bigger correction. What are you thinking at 340s? You see, this is precisely reason why, psychologically speaking, that most retail traders are bearish. And when the most retail traders are bearish, these mainstream media will pump the bearish articles because they need your viewership so they can get because these mainstream medias, they don't they're not investors, right? They are media company. They make money on ads. They put on these articles. They make money on your viewership. So when the majority me, me, retail trade Think about these guys have all the statistic data. They know exactly how to get your attention because they want you to click on it. So most retail traders are bearish, missing out this entire move. These mainstream media companies understanding it, they'll keep pumping out bearish articles to satisfy your needs to comfort or consolation or some sort. And as you read those articles, you're like, oh, yeah, I was right. I was right. But the market goes higher and higher and higher and higher. Isn't that ironic? So that old saying is true. Market always fools the majority. And I add, therefore, the majority follow the fools. Uh, let's go to gold here real quick. I would a little bit of bump, but uh, not it needs. It's gonna need more. Uh, it's gonna need more. I see some sort of a daily bullish divergence here. This is daily chart. You see, we made a lower equal, equal lows on my oscillator. I see. I'm looking at my other screen. I see that um, there's a little bit of bullish divergence where you know it looks like this on my oscillator where there's a lo higher low. But I don't know if the daily bullish divergence is gonna be enough because you know we we we've been in this kind of a prolonged downtrend the short to midterm I don't, that might be enough for a quick pop but i and i'm not sure at this point we've got to need something more on the weekly sense so uh still i would have to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the sellers in the short to midterm but in the primary term um at some point i i really think at some point uh we're gonna make a move like this again right because we see these uh pullbacks and sooner or later, we will make a move. So, I mean, I really look at this. Somewhere in this vicinity is a good opportunity, I believe. Again, if you're if you're going to be things long term, I'm not talking about short term. I'm not talking about swing trading. I'm not talking about, you know, just a couple days trading, overnighting or scalping because I don't do any of those things. But uh, somewhere in this vicinity, I think that's what you do. You, 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 you take 
risk in the market when the when 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 the gold isn't popular that's when you start don't be crying later after this thing goes up right that's what most people after this all right 260 uh well yeah well i missed out i missed out in time you know that's what most people do instead of buying gold here they started buying where here and then they have to go through this that's what more how most people do so when things get popular that's when you want to be fearful when things get unpopular and fearful that's when you're gonna get greedy and it's, it's obviously you never gonna find a perfect bottom unless you get lucky but this is kind of the start strategizing uh with your with your uh, you know trading system let's go silver here silver's a little better a little bit better looking than gold just because we got the potentially higher low that low is higher than this for now but not a whole lot going on either here. It uh, looks like it's consolidating. And so, um, and this is, you know, again, market makes a move, right? And then what does it do? Well, it needs to consolidate. It's digest its gains or it makes a run in this rest. And that's what it does. This is why you want to take risk, you know, and not chase at the top there. Let's go. Bitcoin and the video with this. Um, so looks like we initially made a move here, but we still not feeling filling this gap. That's the this thing has been open quite some time now. And we're starting to stall here. But again, there could be maybe some sort of sideways move too. But right now, I'm thinking because because it's been up so much since October, it was trading at 10, it went to 50, it's about 500%. Uh, it, it, it needs to continue in the uh, momentum if this thing wants to continue higher, but we're kind of starting to, we're still in that momentum, though it's a good thing that actually on this decline, we held that midterm moving average. That's a good thing. Otherwise, if you would have kept going lower, I think then it would have been like this, where you know that long, that midterm and the short term acting as resistance. It's a good thing that we found support and gotten back up above the short term midterm. So we want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers for now. But I think the troublesome right now is this gap must be filled as quickly as possible, and we want to hold above these two moving average if that momentum want to continue to the upside you guys enjoy the rest of this weekend and uh, good luck training next week